Hi, I'm Steve Bailey of Mistral Aviation and today we are measuring the sound reduction capabilities of three different types of headsets with reference to a fourth type. This video is unsponsored so we are completely independent. First, a low-cost over-ear passive reduction set weighing 470 grams. This depends on a physical seal around the ears to keep noise out so necessarily exerts a high clamping force either side of the head. Second, the Bose A20 over-ear with active noise reduction. This has lower clamping force and a lower mass of 365 grams for greater comfort. It compensates reduced passive noise reduction with electronic active noise reduction. Third, the David Clark Pro X2 on-ear set. This combines low clamping force with an even lighter weight of 250 grams. On-ear designs suffer less from heat accumulation under the ear seals than do over-ear designs and on-ear designs are spectacle and sunglass friendly. The side arms of glasses, unless they're very flexible, can lift the ear seals of over-ear types away from the side of the head and allow noise ingress. The David Clark Company claim an impressive 30 decibels or 1000 times reduction in sound at 150 hertz for these headsets. That's as good as a decent pair of ear defenders. The reference set is the Phonak Freecom 7100 with custom moulded ear shells. Although Phonak have withdrawn from the aviation headset market and because of the design it's not possible for us to measure the sound levels inside the shells, we do have Phonak's published performance figures which are comprehensive all the way from 125Hz to 8kHz. We're going to see how these three types stack up in the air. We'll be measuring the sound inside the ear cups, just within the outer ear, using the A-weighted scale, which is adjusted for the human hearing response. We'll be using a miniature microphone with a frequency response of 30Hz to 20kHz, input it to NIOSH software and calibrate it against a dedicated sound meter. So let's go flying. We're flying a Rover aircraft dr 155 CDI. The wood airframe absorbs sound well. And the water-cooled engine uh, makes the cabin twice as quiet as the 180 horsepower like homing derivative. Nevertheless, it's principally the uh, comparison we're interested in here, not so much the absolute values. We level on a preset course, followed by the autopilot, and Jenny on my right, assisted by Avdine, is watching out for traffic. So I'm going to take an ambient reading, uh, just within the confines of my outer ear, because the outer ear amplifies the sound a bit, of course, and then we'll cycle through the headphones taking measurements as we go. So we're back at base and I've analysed the figures. I'm going to plot these as the number of decibels below the ambient noise level. The longer bars are better. Remember that the decibel scale is logarithmic, so a 3 decibel reduction is approximately a halving of volume. So 57 decibels is half the volume of 60 decibels and a quarter of the volume of 63 decibels. A 10 decibel reduction is a 10 times reduction in sound level, 10 to the power of 1. A 20 decibel reduction is a 100 times reduction, 10 to the power of 2. And a 30 decibel reduction would be a 1000 times reduction or 10 to the power of 3. The single number rating attenuation value published by Phonak for the Freecom 7100 is 24 decibels. So that's our baseline. The passive set measured nearly the same. Now when looking at the video of me taking the measurements in the aircraft, you will have seen the numbers vary, maybe because of slipstream sound, so we have to accept a sampling error of around a couple of decibels, which would make the two passive sets indistinguishable. In passive mode, the Bose A20 didn't do as well. This is as expected. It is not designed as a passive set. It's designed for comfort with a &R switched on, and when a &R was switched on, it was up there with the passive sets. Subjectively, I really couldn't distinguish a difference in overall sound level between the Bose with A&R and the passive sets. Only the quality of sound was different, and I did notice that the Bose was particularly good at filtering out the lower frequencies. Moving on to the David Clark Pro X2, because of the design, we were not expecting much in passive mode, and indeed we recorded little better than a halving of sound level. The David Clark Company do, however, claim 30 decibels of reduction at 150Hz in a &R mode, and we were certainly not expecting a 30 decibel reduction across the board, but we were expecting something not too far adrift of this, so we were disappointed to record only a 13 decibel reduction. 
This would reduce the sound level in the ear cups to about 78 decibels in our cabin. 78 decibels is still moderately loud and I think that many people could find this tiring over a long period. Now I'm not saying that I think that the Pro X2 is a poor set, on the contrary I think that it has several very positive attributes, compact size, low mass and comfort, but I think that those attributes might shine better in an inherently quieter, pressurised cockpit rather than in an unpressurised one, albeit one as relatively quiet as the Robars. Also I am concerned that those buying on the basis of the advertised claims may be disappointed at the actual ANR performance. Now one other difference I noticed between the Bose A20 and the DC Pro X2 was the ANR hiss. Now please bear in mind that these measurements were not made in a fully controlled environment and I'd expect slightly different results if we repeated them or if they were made with different equipment. Nevertheless I think that they do give a reasonable objective comparison that ties in well with subjective impressions. So I hope that this has been helpful. Please click the like button if it has and by all means leave constructive feedback in the comments. And thank you for watching.